Now that we've organized our system with lists and the levels that we looked at in the last lesson, it's time to practice processing. How do we move things from the inbox into the right place? And how do we use tags and filters to help us with that? Let's do this exercise in this lesson by opening the inbox. And you should have a couple of items in there at least, right? That's what we did in lesson two when we discussed capturing. And I showed a few examples, which we can still see here. The first thing you'll want to do is go to tags on the second level here and press plus. This will allow you to add any tag. The one you'll want to create for now is a next tag. So you call it next. And then you can give it a color. Now, personally, I like to give it a green color to indicate green signals go like in a traffic light. And then you can save it. I already did that here. And I also created a waiting tag. This means this is basically a blocker. Someone else needs to perform it or you're just waiting for something to happen that you've defined here before you can proceed with something else inside of a sequential project, for example. Let's start simple though. If you remember our lists, we, for example, created the standalone items list. Let's assume that this inbox item here is a standalone task to complete. So you just call it what it is, what it signifies, and then you can start processing. The first thing you'll want to think about is, does this task have a certain deadline or even a start date? In that case, you can select that specific time right here on the top right hand side. Usually next actions, for me at least, don't tend to have a deadline, which is good, but you can't always avoid that. There's various options that you can select to more easily find certain times or automatically like the shortcuts here, select tomorrow, next week, or the start of next month. And you can even signify the duration of the task. So when do you think you will need to do it? Not just that, but also how long will that take? So this is something I would say use with caution because you really can't always predict this accurately. And usually we tend to be a bit over optimistic. So for now, let's assume that this one has no deadline so we can clear it again. We looked at the Eisenhower matrix in the previous video. This is where you can prioritize the task. So you can think if this is a high, medium or low priority or whether it is basically no priority. So there's four levels. One is the highest, four is the lowest. Let's assume this is a high priority task and flag it as such. You can see already it moved up here. And if we go to the Eisenhower matrix, you can see it's no longer in this bracket, but in this one. Now, if we were to also add a date, like let's say tomorrow, then you will automatically see it moves into the urgent and important section from the not urgent and important. So there's this logic built in that's really cool to see. You don't have to do anything extra for it. Back to the inbox, because we're not done, the most important thing we need to do is get it out of the inbox. So on the bottom here, you can select a new list for this item to live inside of. Like we said, standalone items, we just select that and there we go. The inbox has one less item and inside of these standalone items, we have the task. Now, we could say this is a next action. So how do we do that? How do we apply the tag to the task? That's something you could do in the right bottom corner by clicking the menu and selecting tags. From there, you can either type the tag or select the one we already created. We save it and now we can see the next action lives inside of this list. And if we select the tag, you can also see the task and also the list it belongs to. And this is really cool and you will see this in action in a moment. If you remember, we forwarded an email into TickTick as well. What you can do there is navigate to that item and let's say this is a review for a certain headphone that we want to inquire about. What we can do there is actually not go with the standalone items list, but instead we navigate to a project and then we select the headphone project here. So now it's out of the inbox. We can go to the project and we will see it live in here. This is the research phase, if you remember. So any item here is a next action. Within the section, it doesn't really matter which one we do first. So all we have to do here is just select all of them. And from there, we can right click at the next tag 
And now we have three more next actions inside of our system. You can see that here as well. So if we click the next tag, we can see both the standalone item task here, but also the three tasks that we've now added to the headphone project that we can also tick off from here if we want to. We already have two items out of our inbox here and we've processed them into two different places. One key area of GTD as well though, is not just having a list of everything you need to do, but also making sure those are categorized by the context that those items are performed from. For example, some items may be items that you want to read, like this task right here, whereas others may require you to do some online research, such as this one. Those are two different activities. So how do we make sure that we segment those? That's where additional tags come into play. So what you'll want to do is add tags based on context. Let's take, for example, the read tag. We can add it here. We can give it a color as well. I always color my context blue. And we can save it. Then let's create a research tag. And also give that one the blue color. On their own, they are not added to anything yet. But now we can select which one of these tasks has which context. So with this one, we want to give it the read tag. Whereas with this one, we want to give it the research tag to indicate this is something we want to Google, for example. And now we can see only those items based on the tag that they have. Now let's take this one step further. Let's say that this item here is also related to the headphone project. So same story, we navigate it to the list. And from there, we can select it and move it to a different face. For example, let's say that this is a task that has to do with trying it out. That means it's not a task that we can perform now, but what if it is something that already has its context known? Let's say this is another research task. Obviously it doesn't fit the project, but you get what I'm trying to do here. Sometimes tasks can have the same context across different phases. So now we've given it the research tag and we can see when we open the research list that it shows us both next actions as well as actions that we cannot perform just yet. The way to get around that is by navigating to the next taxonomy here, which is filters. This is really where everything comes together. So let's set up our first filter here in which we'll want to filter for items that have the next as well as the research label. Let's call it research. Give it a nice magnifying glass emoji to signify what it means visually. But importantly, you'll want to do this not from the normal view, but from the advanced view. Because here's what happens if you do it from the normal view. We can select the tag, which is good. We can even select both the next as well as the research tag, which is also good. But when we save it, we will see that it actually still filters out any task that meets any of the tags instead of both of them. In other words, it's an or filter. Instead, what we'll want is actually an and filter. And this is something you can do from the advanced view. So here we can do the same thing. Apply a filter, select the tag. Logic of the tag is and with tags, research and next. And we press OK. Here we can save it. And now we see the difference. When we select the filter research, it shows something else from the tag research in that it filters out next actions. So here where it really starts to come together. We can see the filter at first glance, press it and see the actions that we can perform from within that context. Now let's do this a bit more quickly. Let's say that this website is something we also want to research. So from there, we can just add the tag here. We select next and we select research. We save it and we can select it 
for the standalone items list. Our inbox is now empty. And with the filter, we now see an additional item in here. And we can even see which project this belongs to or which list this belongs to. Very cool thing that I recommend doing is actually pinning the filter as well. So you can view it from here. It looks so good. And it really allows you to intuitively select the context that any task can be performed from. And you can just select the context that you're in right now. So your assignment for this lesson is to think about what are your contexts. This is crucial. This is just an example. You will likely have more than one, <laughs> uh, more than three or five even. Think about the different contexts you operate from, add those as tags, and then use filters to distinguish next actions from actions that need to be performed later. Make sure to pin the filters and you will have a fantastically organized system that can really allow you to work from context, which is the intention of everything we're doing here. So let's do this one more time and a bit more quick. Here we have three items that can all be performed from home. So we will select all of them in this parallel project. We create tags, which will be next, but also a new one, which will be home. And we can just type it and it creates them for us. We save it. So now we have the home tag here. We can edit it by, for example, changing the color. Again, I do it with the blue color. And lastly, we add a filter to it. So we create the advanced filter. We say tag includes and home plus next. And we press OK. Then we just need to give it a name. We call it home. And let's also use a nice emoji for it. We save it and we pin it. And there we go. Isn't that cool, guys? We can just select the context right here from the top. And we can see exactly what we need to do next based on our context. So this is how you process things. And again, you can get more granular even. You can, for example, if you have a certain duration for the task, include that in your filters. That's all possible. This is just scratching the surface of what's possible. I invite you to just play around with the filters, both normal and advanced, and build a logic that works for you. If you have any questions about it, just leave them down in the comments because I do want to make sure you do find your way here and I'm happy to help. So good luck with setting all of this up. This is what I would argue the most challenging portion of the system, but if you get it down right, it can really be so powerful. Well, if you've made it this far and it all still makes sense to you, then great job. You have completed what I would argue is the most challenging lesson of the course. And that is usually the case when it comes to processing items, whatever tool you use. It's also very personal. So if you find that the tags I use don't really apply to you, that's okay. Think about ways that you process your items in a way that makes sense to you. Feeling comfortable with it is really crucial. You want to make sure that eventually you're going to be able to run on autopilot, do this thing just without even thinking about it, so you can actually focus on getting things done. Uh, so let me know about any questions you may have in the comments. I uh, look forward to helping you. And if you're ready, then move on to the very last lesson of the course, which is about storing reference material. Yes, that is also possible with TickTick. Let's go.